love so divine, so amazing, demands our soul, our lives, and our home. Heavenly Father, speak to us, renew us, to know again that your love is so amazing. And this amazing love demands all that is all in us. Holy Spirit, anoint my tongue. I kneel this hour to speak your word powerfully, accurately to minister healing strength to your people. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, I want to welcome everyone again to this special service and those who are joining us on Zoom, online. God bless you and God be with you. On this special last Sunday in the month of August, I bring greetings to you. I know many of you know that I traveled, I would say, to the best country in the world. And you know that country? Nigeria, where the sun is free. Wonderful place to be. And I believe along the line, the Lord, in his own way, has promoted our ministry together. What affects me affects you. Because everything being done, including the promotion, is to the glory of God. It's for mission. And therefore, God again is speaking to us through the gospel. And this morning again when I was reading and reading through, you know, this reading of the banquet, the parable of the banquet, is very common. You know, it's so wonderful to see, a, you know, when you are preaching again after some time, and your mother is sitting, looking at you directly. How come I'm a prof? God bless you. We have in our midst this morning, my beloved, Mama Bishop, I call her Mama Bishop, just be promoted from Bishop, no, from Professor now to Mama Bishop. Professor, Mrs. Samuel, last Sonia, God bless you. We appreciate your coming. The banquet parable is very common to all of us. You know, invite this, invite that. But this morning, the Lord focuses my attention on two groups of people. I don't know where you belong. Number one, in verse 7, read to us by Brother Daniel. Jesus noticed how some of the guests were choosing the best places. So he told this parable to all of them. Then, look at verse 12. Then Jesus said to his hosts, when you give a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brother or your relation or your rich neighbors, for they will invite you back. In this way, you will be paid for what you did. We have two group of people here Jesus is addressing. The guests and the hosts. How many of us have been guests before? Guests? Okay, almost all of us have been guests. How many of us have been a host before? You see now, Jesus is speaking to you and me, both the host and the guest. But if you go back to our reading in Hebrew, Hebrew 13, Hebrew 13, I believe the Lord is speaking to us this morning how to be a godly guest and a godly host. How to please the Lord, whether you are hosting or you are being hosted. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 says, Keep on loving one another as Christian brothers. Remember to welcome strangers in your homes. There were some who did that and welcomed angels without knowing it. Oh. When you are a host, don't just take people 
people are hosting for ordinary. They are angels on assignments. And when you have been hosted, remember, you are not just there to eat and drink. You are there to be a blessing. How well do you please your host when you go there? I have been to some occasions. When people go to occasions like that and they begin to pack every food on the table or drink on the table to their bag. <laughs> what are you doing to the host? But let's reflect on these two people here. Jesus noticed how some of the guests were choosing the best places. When you were a guest, the last time you were invited, where did you start? Did you look for the best place? When someone invites you to a wedding feast, wedding feast here is symbolic, can be an invitation. Do not sit down in the best place. It could happen that someone more important than you has been invited. What does that say? Anytime you are a guest, remember you are not the best guest. There is somebody important than you. And that is how we can please God. That is how God's spirit can move. When you don't exalt yourself above others, when you see others above you in a loving manner, and your host, who invited both of you, hear that. Anytime you are a guest, you are not the only one invited. So don't finish the food on the table. Take your portion and leave the rest. I went for a wedding recently. You know the way people take their seats? And I think they pass it to the kitchen so people sat close to that place. <laughs> so other people, you know, move around and ring around the hall. While the food was coming from the kitchen, the table would take it. And when other things were coming, that same table would take it. And you got to a point. I wanted to stand up to go and challenge him. My wife says, sit down. <laughs> Do we behave like those people, those guests, that we always sit at the advantage corner in order to do what? To carry away. But if you, you be the guest, you make other people to suffer, then you are wicked. And that is the world we are here today. Many are hiding things that belong to the masses. Can you see how the gas bill is going up? But some people have taken advantage of that. Are you like that guest? The type of guests we have in the world today are the guests that make other guests to suffer. And we blame the leadership. What type of guest are you? What type of guest am I? When they distribute things in, in parties, you collect things that are made for 20 people. You carry it home. You just carry baggage. What you cannot use what am I saying here? Whenever you are a guest, remember other people are also guests. That says you extend love to them. When you survey the wonder of cross, upon which the King of Glory died, your richest position as a guest or as a host, you can't but what? Loss. For to gain eternal life. 
The message this morning is, what type of guest are you in this world? Do you know you're a guest in this world? We are guests. Nobody's here forever. You are not a landlord. Stop living as if there is no death. We are guests. This world is not our home. We are just passing. As a guest, we are on a journey, passing through. This evening, we are going to welcome our students. Once upon a time, we welcome someone. We are moving. We are on a journey. This parable is sent to the whole world. We are all guests. Stop hoarding things that are meant for others. Stop living as if the whole world is for you. What type of guest are you as a leader? What type of guest are you as a political leader? What type of guest are you as a business person? You are a guest. Therefore, as a doctor, work as a guest. Give your best in that hospital. As a soldier, as a police person, as a youth, you are a guest. You will soon become a mother. Can you see that? You will soon graduate. We all go through that journey of a guest. But why are we living as if we are the host? Many guests have been embarrassed. Look at that. And your host who invited both of you will have to come and say to you, let him have this place. Must you wait for you to be scolded? Must you wait for you to be punished before you release? Who is the host? Who is our host in this world? God Almighty! And many guests, because of their misbehavior, the host have come to say to them, yes, because you are a bad guest, let another person have this place. Then we'll take you home. Many are dying prematurely when they should not die. When you are living life as a host, wherever you are supposed to be living as a guest. You are crewing wealth, wealth, wealth that you cannot carry anywhere. I pray the Lord will not stop your journey in this world prematurely. Many guests in this world have been taken away prematurely without accomplishing what God wanted them to accomplish. Why? Because rather than living as a guest, they were living as if they are the owner of the world. We are the Saudi Hussein of yesterday. We are the leaders of yesterday in our own country. We are the adventurers of yesterday. They live and see they are the host. And today, the money they took away from the, to Switzerland, to America, to the United Kingdom is being returned gradually, but they return it completely. Amen. And before we pray again, look at the second part. I love this. Then you will be embarrassed and have to sit in the lowest place. If, as a guest, you don't maintain the ethical belief in God, then something God will find situation to correct you, even that we are embarrassed. May you not be embarrassed before you know what to do. Then Jesus said to his host, when you give a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brother or your rich relative or your rich neighbor, for they will invite you back. Here, this one is not saying, don't take care of your brother, sister. All what Jesus is saying is, don't just ask people who will pay you back. Ah, I cannot invite people when I spend people. At least I gave them so so. When they come, they will give me so so. You already have your reward. The warning Jesus is giving to the guest is the same warning to the host. Which means you are here today. How many warnings are you receiving? Two, you are receiving a warning as a guest in this world, and you are also receiving a warning as a host of others.
when you invite them. What is the lesson before we pray? Then Jesus said to his host, when you give a lunch or dinner, do not invite your friend or your brother or your relative or your rich neighbors, for they will invite you back. And in this way, you will, you will be paid back for what you did. When you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed. This is where I want you to live. please listen here as you pray. As a host, in this local church, you are a host as a member. Who are you inviting? Who are you inviting? Who am I inviting? If we are inviting people as a host in our school road church, this pew will be filled. But we know how to invite people to our birthday and special occasion. Who are we to invite? Invite the poor. The poor, spiritually poor. Not only those that cannot eat or materially poor. The poor who are yet to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Let's invite them. That's what we have as a role of a host. We are a host for the gospel of Jesus Christ. The moment you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you become a what? A host. You become a kind of, you know, in Methodism, we celebrate our source of strength in the house, our class, class meetings. We are that we host other people and we release ourselves. Invite the poor, the crippled, those who have been crippled spiritually, who have been carried away with the enticement of back to and get fall. Who have been so men, who have been so corrupted, the crippled, who are crippled maritally, who are lame, physically, physically or lame, mentally or spiritually, and blind. Even though they see physically, they cannot see spiritually. God is saying we should invite them and you will be blessed. You are not only coming to mark register and go like that. We come to church to be empowered as a host to bring in other people. Bear in mind also, somebody invited you and me. And when he invited you and me, he empowered us to become a host. Through what? Through the Holy Spirit. In our morning cry, we do morning cry prayer in the chaplaincy every last Sunday of the month, 7 to 8. We are talking about holiness unto the Lord. What is holiness? Holiness is a byproduct of being born again. Holiness is not the cloth and wearing. The castle does not make a monk. Holiness is a byproduct of being born again. Of being a host. A host that has received Jesus as Lord and Savior and by the Holy Spirit and ready to invite the poor, the lame, and the blind. Let me give you this as we pray. When I say holiness is a byproduct, what does that mean? It's not what you do. It's not the preaching. You know the story of Joseph. Okay, let's leave Joseph this time around. Let's take David. Even Joseph is also good. Joseph faced Potiphar's wife. And you know, this woman invited her to bed. That is where holiness is tested. And for Joseph, the whole area is secure. No, no ice no camera. But he said, I cannot do this. Out of the abundance of his heart, that is the byproduct of his believing God, who is holy. He said, I cannot sin against God and my masters. And they ran away. That is holiness. Holiness is not, hey, I'm just trying to help her. You help her into hell. And look at David. David even was trying to compromise as many of us today. We are talking about being a guest and a host. 
Don't be a guest and receive the gift that will take you away from God's presence. David was about to face Goliath, you know, right from where? From the farm. And Saul said, well, come and take my garments. Initially, David took it. You cannot be a guest in this world and wear the garment of the world. He got to a point. David said, I cannot go with this. That is relationship with God, talking there. If you're born, be born again. Your redemption will challenge you. No, I carry something inside me. I cannot go with this. And the Bible says, he removed the garment he borrowed from Saul. And then he was able to face Goliath. You cannot face the Goliath of this world as a host or a guest in a borrowed garment. In a borrowed idea. Without holiness, no host, no guest shall see the Lord. Are you a host or a guest? Anytime you're a guest, remember, without holiness, you cannot see God. Anytime you're a host, remember, without holiness, you cannot please God. And are you hearing me? How can I be a true guest and a true host? By surrounding your life to Jesus. By receiving him as your Lord and Savior. That is the beginning of being a guest before Jesus' feet. And then you are not nurtured through disciples, discipleship and you become a host. In this church, we need more guests, we need more hosts. That will bring the poor, the lame, the crippled, the blind. So that together, we can increase the number of guests. We are in a culture, in a world, in a nation. Christianity is going down. It is going down. Except you rise, except I rise to be a genuine guest and host. By receiving Jesus as our Lord and Savior. By extending invitation to others around us, then we can be rewarded and be blessed. God will repay you on the day the good people rise from the dead. There's a day to be paid. What will you be paid at the end of the day? Will you receive eternal life or eternal hell? Check what type of guest are you? What type of host are you? Let us pray.